Praise the Lord. Are you still awake? Or you want to go to sleep now? Can you give some time? I said, can you give some time? How much time? Two hours. Praise the Lord. It's wonderful to be together again and look at Joshua. Joshua is such a wonderful book. And when you eventually get to heaven, because I'm planning to get to heaven. I said I'm planning to get to heaven. And when we get to heaven, guess if you just meet Joshua at the gate. And he said, did you read my book? And then you said, I didn't only read your book, I studied your book. And then you see now, I have a million years to discuss all the details. And you'll tell him everything I said about him. And then for you to have a handshake of Joshua. Think about that. It's going to be a wonderful time in heaven. When you go through this book of Joshua, leading on to the promised land, and then you eventually get to that promised land because of all the principles and because of all the things that are established in your heart, in your life, in the book of Joshua. What a wonderful reunion it will be when we eventually get there. By the grace of God, we'll be there. You'll rise up. You'll commit yourself to the Lord. That as we're going to open the book again, and we're going to see in the book of Joshua, great revelation preserved for us. You pray, open your mouth and pray. That everything you hear, everything you learn, will be of tremendous help, benefit to you, to lead you on through River Jordan, through all the obstacles, and then eventually you'll get to that promised land and settle, settle down in that promised land. What a glorious, glorious dwelling place that will be. Commit yourself to the Lord. That the Lord will keep you awake. Awake. Alert. Receiving everything the Lord has for you. As we look at the word tonight. That the power of the Lord will come so mightily upon your life as we examine this special important subject. The hand of the Lord will be upon your life and the spirit of the Lord will stir you up, keep you awake. Like leaders, it's not a general retreat. This leadership strategy congress. That will not miss a word. A declaration. A statement. A verse. And that you'll have the proper attitude to receive everything he has for you. And you'll be established in the world.
In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. We thank you, Lord, because you are not tired revealing your mind, the depths of your truth unto us. And we are not tired either receiving from you great revelations. Blessed our, our, our ears for what we hear, our eyes for what they see. And Lord, we pray you open it up for us again that we will hear, we will see, we will understand, and will stand on this eternal word in Jesus' name. Lord, the sober attitude, the respect and the honor for your word, the adoration, the consecration, the submission to your authority, and the right disposition to your word, you grant us as leaders in the church in Jesus' name. And we pray, O oh Lord, we will not belittle your word. We will not relegate your word to the background. We will not trample upon the word. Neither will we joke or jest with the word. But Lord, you'll give us the mind of Christ. The spirit of Christ. And the spirit of the conqueror. The spirit of the apostles and the leaders that went before us. And will come approaching your word with the readiness of Samuel. Say, speak, Lord, for thy servants are hearing what we'll hear. We'll endeavor to understand. We will practice it. We will do it. And the word will bear fruit in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We come back to the book of Joshua. And in the book of Joshua, we look at, we're looking at one verse of scripture. In verse 5 of Joshua chapter 3. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. If you remove the word tomorrow, and you had read it like this, Sanctify yourselves, for the Lord will do wonders among you. Let me back up a little. I want to look at Moses talking to Joshua before he left. And if you were to use, if Moses were to use these words and Moses addressing Joshua and looking at the promised land because the Lord made him to climb up to the mountain top and he said Moses look ahead that's the land is flowing with milk and honey now come down and lay hands on Joshua because it is Joshua that will lead the people to the land I want to see Joshua and Moses and I want to see Moses using these words concerning Joshua Joshua Set apart yourself. Joshua, consecrate yourself. Joshua, sanctify yourself. Why? For the Lord will do wonders through you. Hold that in your mind. Joshua, after I have left, after I'm gone, sanctify yourself. For the Lord will do wonders through you and as we're here tonight i tell you the same thing you will soon go back to your various locations localities and you'll go to the field of ministry look ahead a lot is yet to be done signs and wonders great things to be done and look at yourself as if Moses were addressing you. And he said, sanctify yourself. Because God will do wonders through you. 
And then let me look at Joshua holding that word. I'll not let this go. The parting words of my master. The parting words of my leader. And the six he left with me. He told me of the wonders. How can we count them? But he told me there is a condition. There is something to do. There is something to fulfill. Sanctify yourself. You wake up in the morning. Joshua, if you want this day. From the morning. Until the noon. Until afternoon. Until evening. If you want the Lord this day. To do wonders through you. Sanctify yourself. You begin the week. And on the first day of the week, you look ahead. There are seven days ahead of me this week. And here am I starting this morning. What should I do if I expect wonders this week? And this is just the beginning of the week. Between you and God, sanctify yourself. Because the Lord will do wonders through you at the beginning of the month. Don't you look ahead? Don't you plan ahead? Don't you look at tomorrow, next day, next week, next month, this whole year? Sanctify yourself because the Lord wants to do wonders through you this month. As we, as we come here to the Congress and you are thinking about what will this year look like? What are you going to accomplish this year? As you look on, this first week is almost going. And then the second week. And the third week. And this month of January. Do you make plans? Do you look ahead? Do you have any goal? Do you have any, any, any accomplishment you have in mind? Any expectation? What do you want this year to be? Joshua, this year, what will it look like? I want it to be a year of wonders, a year of signs. Then Joshua, sanctify yourself. So that the Lord can do wonders through you. And I begin to look at Joshua. And you can see, this man Joshua, he sanctified himself. And he was sanctified by the Lord. You can see the evidence. I told you, in all the other studies, his character. It's patience, it's purity, it's submission, it's consecration, it's yieldedness, it's implicit obedience unto the Lord. The man of course sanctified himself, he was sanctified by the Lord. Did the Lord do wonders? Of course. The dividing of River Jordan, wonders. And the very fact that they were circumcised... And when they were all circumcised, they were weak. Don't you remember? How Levi and Simeon, when the people of Shechem, when they were circumcised, thinking that they were going to be able to get Dinah, to get married unto the son of their king. And then Simeon and Levi said, we cannot do that because you are circumcised. And except you circumcise all the men, that marriage will be impossible. They deceive them. And then they circumcise every one of them. And only two young men came on those people, killed all of them. Because they were weak in the circumcision. These children of Israel, they were just by the wall of Jericho. And then they, all, they circumcised all the men. All the men that came through the wilderness and they were not circumcised before. And the, child, the people of Jericho, they didn't move a single, one, a single hand against them to say now they are weak. Now they are circumcised. And they are lying there suffering from the sore of the circumcision. They couldn't get near them. That's a wonder. And then the, 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 the pulling down of the wall of Jericho. By just a shout, walking around once a day for six days. And then on the seventh day, rising up early and seven times encompassing that wall. And then they shouted. 
and those great walls, high walls, thick walls came down. That's a wonder. And then the, he was on the battlefield, and Joshua became so bold in faith. And then he looked up at the sun because the sun was about to surge. And he said, Sun, stay there. I'm on the battlefield. And you, moon, in the valley of Agelon, stay there. What a wonder. But the greatest of all wonders, the greatest of all wonders in Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24, verse 31. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua. No Korah. Dathan on Abiram. No. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And they didn't need time to say, we're going back to the wilderness. We're going back to Egypt like they did at the time of Moses. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua. Wonderful wonders. The wonder of the stability of faith. Of the whole nation. And then it says. And which had known. All the works of the Lord. That he had done. For Israel. And so you see. That man sanctified himself. And his future. Was a future of signs. And wonders. And you now. As you are here. And you're looking forward. Why did why do we put the leadership strategy congress the first week of January every time? Who is to prepare for the whole year? Is to look ahead. Is to allow you to be able to collect all your thoughts, all your ideas, all your aspirations, all your expectations, everything together. So that at the beginning of the year, the very beginning of the year, before you do any other thing, you're looking at the whole year in front of you. And the opportunity is there to make this year a different year, the best year of your life you ever spent. And if that is going to be so, that's why the Lord is saying, get ready and prepare don't play games like you played the other year. Time is going. You are getting older. Already, because last year is gone, your time on earth is shortened by another year. We don't have much time. What are you going to be in life? What are you going to do in life? What signs and wonders do you have? In mind, think about this, think about this, think about this. That if you think of the whole year, how many periods, opportunities of ministry do you have? Let's say, for example, here we are. If you have, as you look at this whole year, let's say you have only a hundred messages to preach. If you preach one in a lousy way, in a careless way, in an unprepared manner, you've lost one percent for the whole year. One out of a hundred. And then if you have, let's say for example, we have a kind of a retreat. And you're ministering. And you have only five, one, two, three, four, five chances to minister. If you minister once out of the five in a lousy way, in an ineffective manner, in an unprepared manner, in a way that there is no record in heaven that that ministry of that period is going to bear any fruit and they record it down. You have lost one chance out of five. That's 20% of your time, of the period of ministry that you have lost. And so as you think about this whole year, how many chances do you have? How many opportunities do you have either to preach or to do any other kind of ministry? And if you are careless in one, a lot is lost. A, a great percentage is lost. That's why you ought to think the year is ahead of me. 
And I watch the signs and the wonders for the year. And it says, if you want that, sanctify yourselves. And give the Lord a chance to do wonders through you. And give the Lord a chance to make supernatural breakthrough come down upon the lives of people through you. Come back to Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people. Now he's talking to everybody. He's not just talking to the priests. And he's not just talking to the officers. He's talking to everyone and he's talking to the people. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Signs and wonders for the sanctified. Signs and wonders for the sanctified. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, prescribed personal sanctification by God's people Pres a prescribed personal sanctification for God's people prescribed outlined put in place decided dictated required Prescribed personal sanctification by God's people. Number two, promised purifying sanctification for God's people. Promised purifying sanctification for God's people. Number three, predicted purposeful signs. For God's people. Pred predicted. Purposeful signs. For God's people. Number one. Prescribed. Personal sanctification. By God's people. In Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. And Joshua said. Unto the people. Sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. How will they know if they carried out that personal sanctification? Joshua will tell them. Because Joshua said, sanctify yourselves. He knew what he expected of them. Set apart yourself. He knew what he expected of them. Consecrate yourself. He knew what he expected of them. Become distinguished and different. He knew what he expected of them. It's like when you tell your little child. You say go and take your bath. And then the child goes. The sponge is still dry. He didn't use the sponge. And the soap is still like it was. He didn't choose the soap. He was so, just in a hurry. And he wanted to show mommy that I did what you said. He got to the bathroom and he poured the water on himself. And then he, mommy, mommy, I've done what you said. No, he cannot tell. We will tell him whether he's done it or not. And mommy will say, no, you didn't. But see, I'm wet all over my body. No, you did not do what you are supposed to do. Go back to the bathroom again and wash. Joshua will tell them. If they really sanctify themselves, he told them, sanctify yourselves. Prescribed personal sanctification by God's people. And then he said, for tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11. Reading from verse 44. Leviticus 11 verse 44. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves. Wait for a moment there. The word therefore. I am the Lord your God. I'm watching you. I'm the Lord your God. And I see through. I see your heart. I see your mind. I see your spirit. I see into your soul. 
before the x-ray was invented god could see everything on the inside before the use of the x-ray before you talk about scanning they discovered that just a few years ago the lord could scan your heart your motive your mind your intention your ambition he could scan everything if they can do it in the world or science don't you think god knows that it says i'm the lord your god i scan i do the x-ray and i can reveal what is on the inside and you are dealing with me i am the lord your god therefore because of your relationship with me and because i'm watching and because i'm looking and because i'm examining by him actions are weighed he weighs our thoughts in the balance of his word and it says therefore sanctify yourselves and you shall be holy he said when it is done you'll be holy your behavior will be holy your character will be holy your attitude will be holy and everything you do whether it's outside the church or inside the church god doesn't classify what we do that's in the church that's outside the church that's in the home that's in the office holiness is not something you define one way in church and another way in the place of work he looks at everything and he says be ye holy neither shall you defile yourselves with any manner of creeping sin that creepeth upon the earth for i am the lord that bringeth you up out of the land of egypt to be your god you shall therefore because i'm your god and because i brought you out and i have a reason for bringing you out i have a reason a purpose for calling you out because of that therefore be holy for i am holy you see that and he examines and he knows whether the prescription for that personal sanctification is there or not in leviticus chapter 20 leviticus chapter 20 verse 7 sanctify yourselves therefore you always ask yourself why do they always put therefore therefore that means there's a reason because of who god is if you're going to have interaction with that god therefore sanctify yourselves if you're going to have the approval of that holy god therefore sanctify yourselves if you're going to have the support of the power the mighty power of that almighty god therefore sanctify yourself because you're expecting that he will do in your life what you cannot do israel look at the river jordan you cannot divide the river jordan and because you're expecting that the lord will do for you what you cannot do for yourself sanctify yourselves israel already you were told there are seven nations mightier and greater than who you are you don't have experience in battle and warfare and if you're going to defeat them and you want the power of the almighty to come to your aid and defeat those seven mightier nations than yourself therefore that's the, that's why the therefore is there and as we look at our lives how weak we are in ourselves and how great things we want the Lord to do for us. And how great enemies we want to conquer in our lives. And what, what mighty signs and wonders we need from the presence of the Lord. And the Lord is saying, if that's what you expect, my approval, my presence, my help, my support. If that's what you want, for me to take you to a place where you cannot take yourself 
Therefore, sanctify yourselves and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. In um, Second Chronicles chapter twenty-nine, Second Chronicles chapter twenty-nine, verse five. In Second Chronicles chapter twenty-nine, verse five. And said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves. Sanctify now yourselves. If they were wondering how they were to sanctify themselves, then they were told another thing in that verse 5. And sanctify the house of the Lord your God, the, your, uh, the, the, God, the Lord God of your fathers. Now, it is something interesting here. Sanctify yourself. And then sanctify the house of the Lord. If I can tell, if I can investigate how the house of the Lord will be sanctified, then I'm through. Then I'm all right. Then I understand. Then I know how to sanctify myself. Sanctify yourself, part one. But you sanctify the house of the Lord. What are we to do to sanctify the house of the Lord? Does that mean we will take the house out of this place and relocate it here? No. That means then when it says I shall sanctify myself, it's not a relocation that he's talking about. Sanctify the house of the Lord. Does that mean we're to come? Now, when we finish building house, we dedicate it. Was he saying, sanctify this house of the Lord and have a dedication ceremony? No. Does that mean then I'm to come for dedication? Is that the word sanctify here? Sanctify yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord. What does it mean? Look at that verse 5. And carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. That's how to sanctify the house. The house of the Lord. Examine that house. Sanctify it. How do we sanctify it? Examine every nook and corner. And cleanse. And remove. And carry out. And carry forth all the filthiness out of the house of the Lord. If you do that, you sanctify the house. We'll come back to that, verse 5. But please come to verse 15. And they gathered their brethren and sanctified themselves and came according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. Sanctify yourself. Sanctify the house of the Lord. Number one, they were to carry forth all the filthiness out of the house. Throw it away. That's sanctifying the house. Sanctify yourselves. What are we to do? All the filthiness within. Filthy thoughts. Filthy plans. Filthy motives. Feel the intention. We carry them forth out of this house. We are the house of the Lord. We are the temple of God. Sanctify yourself. Sanctify your temple. Sanctify your house. Don't you know the Holy Ghost dwells in you? You are the temple, the house of the Lord. Carry forth all the filthiness that's inside. You are clean on the outside. External sins are forgiven. They are cleansed. And the, all the external things that anybody will say, look at him, he's a sinner. All the external evidence is gone. But the inside, the thought, the filthy thought on the inside, and the filthy attitude on the inside. 
and the filthy plans on the inside and the filthy ambition on the inside you carry forth all the filthiness from the inside and then you throw them away that sanctify yourself and then it says they cleansed the house of the lord and in what cleansing you know sometimes our brain needs cleansing after you are saved and before you are saved you'll be looking at all those pornographic things now you are saved and sometimes you just close your eyes like this and then all the pictures begin to appear before you like a painted canvas we need to cleanse this thing here so that all that filthiness that was there before all the filthy the filthy language you don't choose them anymore they don't hear it from us but we know them they are bottled on the inside because when you are going to school all those filthy lang the filthy vocabularies they were inside and then all the you remember all the books that you read and you remember i don't want to mention their authors those popular authors and they put some things inside you and some dirty proverbs and some dirty kind of a uh, kind of utterances that was there they were there before but now you are born again and you kind of bottle it in and suppress it and keep it in and born again i should not use that anymore and anytime somebody confronts you the sin is almost wanting to jump out of your mouth there's no no i must not say that but the vocabulary is there cleanse yourself all those things on the inside and you know sometimes if you have been with a particular gang before you were born again and you know methods how to open a door without having the key in your hand and all the methods you knew how to be able to you know whatever it is if you wanted something from anybody the magic that you used to have and the things that you used to do and the kind of words that has stored inside you that made that will make you to have anything you wanted and anybody any girl could fall for you because she knew the look the thought the idea the suggestion we call it auto suggestion that just comes automatically out of your mind that controls other people now all the filthiness within as it says sanctify yourself sanctify the house of the lord cleanse yourself cleanse the house of the lord that all those filthy things on the inside the thoughts that just bother you you open your bible and you are reading some beautiful passage and while you are reading that beautiful passage that other thought is not coming from outside it's being generated from inside filling your mind and your brain and and everything and then it clouds the passage you are reading because of the filthiness within cleanse yourself that's the sanctification the prescribed personal sanctification by god's people that those things are there already and it takes real prayer and it takes real dedication sometimes real crying before the lord if you were to ask any any teenager that these teenagers they were innocent they didn't know anything and then some girls or some boys came around them trying to fool around them mess up around them if any teenager will yield to that after going through that experience of the lust of the flesh and then maybe the child cries and weeps and then gets born again and or gets restored even after that salvation that lady that girl that teenager will be having a hard time because of what she saw and because of what she tasted and because of what she experienced the thought in the mind the thought in the mind and the pool within her and she's not committing that kind of sin anymore but of inside and then the lord is saying sanctify yourself that sin is on the inside dig it out cleanse it take it away that's what the lord is telling us and you do it yourself 
And then we're told in that second Chronicles chapter 29, verse 16, and the priest went into the inner part of the house of the Lord. That's how they will sanctify the house of the Lord and to cleanse it and brought out all the uncleanness. Brought out all the uncleanness. And then it says that they found in the temple of the Lord. They brought everything out. Sanctify yourselves. Sanctify the house of the Lord. And you're sanctifying yourself. Will mean that all the filthiness within, everything will be taken away. Look at Second Corinthians chapter 7. Second Corinthians chapter 7. Reading from verse 7. Having therefore, again therefore, therefore, all the time, as we've been reading, as the Lord is talking about, sanctify yourself, purify yourself, cleanse yourself. He talks about, there is a therefore, having therefore these promises. Watch promises. You know, there are things that motivate us to do what we do. The things that motivate us. And I told you before, you cannot have two thoughts in the mind at the same time. And it's the predominant thought that drives you, that moves you, that directs your life. If your predominant thought is God and not yourself. If your predominant thought is the glory of God and not your own praise. If your predominant thought is the provision of the Lord. That dominant thought in your heart, in your life. Is going to direct you and control you and move you in the direction you ought to go. Having therefore these promises, which promises go back to chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. Wherefore come out from among them, and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. That's a promise, I will receive you. I will be a father unto you. That's a promise, I'll be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters. That's another promise. Says the Lord Almighty. Having therefore these promises that we just read. Dearly beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves. That's the sanctification. Sanctify yourself. Cleanse yourself. Let us cleanse ourselves. From all filthiness of the flesh. From all filthiness of of the flesh from all filthiness of the flesh look up here let's say you pick a magazine and in that magazine there is uh, the picture of a lady there that is not well dressed and then you're looking at that picture and then your wife is coming and then you close that uh, page and then you're looking at another page the question is what's your predominant thought is your thought about god about his glory about the cleansing and about sanctify yourself so that he will do great things wonders in your life or is your thought only on my wife must not see I'm looking at something like this. My wife will be asking me a question. Honey, what's the matter? Why are you looking at that kind of thing? Your thought, your focus, your concentration. Because of the promises of God, not because of your wife good that you respect your wife is good don't misunderstand me that you love your wife so much you don't want her to find you doing anything that is improper that's good and we should have that kind of intimacy with our wives that we don't want her to ever find us doing something foolish something uncalled for 
I want to, you know, you want to be, you know, the, the priest of your family. You want your, your wife to look at you as her pastor, her priest, her intercessor. That if she has any problem, she'll have confidence in you. That this man, if I cannot get to the pastor in church, I can get to the pastor in the home. That's great. But we must go beyond that and say, because I want God to use me. And I want the wonders of God. I will cleanse myself whether the wife is there or not. Whether the husband is there or not. The wife cannot see your thoughts. But God can. Your husband cannot read your thoughts every time. But God can. And therefore, every uncleanness in the mind. Every uncleanness in the thoughts. Every uncleanness on the inside. It says, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In the fear of God. Do we fear God to the point we we'll say, no, I cannot think that. He sees every thought. He reads everything on the inside. I cannot see, I have the fear of God. We come to point number two. Promised purifying sanctification for God's people. Promised purifying sanctification for God's people. Here is a part of God now. Here is what God does. We come now to Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 7. Leviticus 20 verse 7. It says, Sanctify yourselves therefore, and be ye holy, for I the Lord, for I am the Lord your God. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. Uh, let, let's assume for a moment that we didn't even know the meaning of sanctification. Let's assume for a moment that we didn't know the depth and the height and the length and the breadth of sanctification. Let's assume for a moment that we didn't have any teacher to teach us what sanctification is, but to have a sincere heart. A longing heart, a thirsty soul, a desirous mind. And then we read this I am the Lord which sanctify you. We don't, let's say we don't know the depth and the height of that sanctification, but the Almighty God knows. And then we carry ourselves to God and we kneel down. And we say, Lord, I don't understand the depth or the height of this sanctification. But you said, I am the Lord who sanctify you. I am here. I'm kneeling down here. I'm going to nail myself to the ground here. I pin myself on the ground here. There's something I want. That thing you said, I am the Lord who sanctify you. I don't know the implication. I don't know how deep it is. I don't know how high it is. How broad it is. But you, you said it. And you know what you made. I am here. Sanctify me. If you are sincere. If you are honest. If the, if the desire is deep and the Lord knows your heart and you say, God, this is your promise. I, I've not got a lot of books. I've not got a lot of teachers to tell me what that sanctification is. But you said, I am the Lord which sanctify you. Here am I. Do it for me. You'll come out of that place sanctified. And then the experience will now tell you the meaning. When God does it, when he looks at you and the fire of God drops on the altar of your soul and all the uncleanness there and all the chaff there with the unquenchable fire comes upon that altar and then everything is burnt away and you're free. Free in the mind, and free in your heart, and free in your soul, and free in your spirit and you're sanctified and then you know 
before I knelt down, there was something inside here. But when I went on my knees and I went before the face of the Lord and I said, Lord, I don't know the implication, the depth of the heart or the height, but here I am, sanctify me. By the time I rose up from my knees, something happened. I can tell the difference between after and before. That's the word. That's the sanctification. I am the Lord which sanctify you. That's what God does. And it's a promised purifying sanctification. For God's people, Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. And I'm reading from verse 25. I'm reading from verse 26. Ezekiel 36, 25. It says in verse 25, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and all your idols will I cleanse you. The salvation. Now we come to sanctification promised, and it gives us the purifying of a heart. In verse, ta in verse 26, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Women should understand this. Now, a woman has fibroid. And it's on the inside. And it's taking the place where the baby should take. And because of that, that fibroid there is hindering childbearing. And then the woman is going about the tummy is so big. And then as she touches that area of the tummy, it's hard. It says, my husband touched this place. It's like a stone there. This is hard. What are we going to do? Rubbing mentholatum will not take away that stone. And rubbing Vaseline on the outside, ointment will not take away that stone. Will not take away that fibroid. And the fellow is carrying it about. And she says, I want a child. I want a child. Remove the fibroid and give space and give chance for the, for the baby to come. There will be fruitlessness as long as that fibroid is there. It's occupying too much space. And it's as hard as a stone. And nobody can remove it for you. And you cannot remove it for, by yourself. You will go to the uh, surgeon. And then you surrender yourself to the surgeon. And you will say, you'll allow the surgeon to examine you. And you'll allow the surgeon to tell you now. You will come in two days time. Before you come, please don't eat anything. You know, they have to regulate your life. And they have to tell you what to do and what not to do. And if you're a woman of yourself and you say, I don't listen to anybody, whatever they say. Who is he, by the way, telling me that when I'm coming, I shall not eat anything. If you're a woman of self-will, that fiber will remain there. Obey that doctor, my dear sister. And then you get there and the doctor says, lie down here you know i don't obey anybody without obedience to the doctor the fiber will remain there i don't obey anybody the self-will the stony heart will remain there and then they give you anesthetics and you don't know where you are anymore you are lost in sleep deep sleep you're not dead but you're not conscious anymore and it is when you are not conscious like that, the surgeon will take the knife. And then he'll cut you open and remove that stone, that fibroid. Then he'll close it up. And by the time you come back, as you appear like this before your husband, and he looks at your tummy, dear, you look smarter than before. All the stone is gone. All the thing that is swollen there is gone. Now you are ready. You are getting ready. You are getting ready to be fruitful. But you know, as we carry this stony heart all about, and it's stony, 
the fiber, spiritual fiber that is there. And the Lord is saying, come. Don't take anything but calm. All the things you are taking from the world, feeding your mind ways in the world, all the stories, feeding yourself. Don't take anything while you are coming. You need to empty yourself while you are coming. Don't take anything. And then come on here now. Stretch yourself on the altar of God like a sacrifice because an operation is necessary. And there's no argument now. And then go to sleep. Forget yourself. Don't think about yourself anymore. My prestige, my personality, my position, my duty, my responsibility. You know, sometimes if you're thinking too much of responsibility, you're not, you're not concentrate on what the Lord wants you to concentrate on. And I pity those people who are busy at every meeting. I pity those people who are so active. In every conference, every congress. And you don't have time. But when you forget position, you forget all these privileges and you're stretched on the altar. And then the Lord puts you to sleep. You cannot think about my car, my house, my prestige, my desires. Everything is laid on the altar. And you're not thinking about anything anymore. You've gone to sleep. And the Lord takes the surgical knife. And he slashes you open. And that thing at the very center of your heart. That was in the heart of Lucifer. That made him to lose heaven. The eye, the eye. I will, I will. Thinking about yourself every time he takes the surgical knife and slashes you open. And he knows how to do it. He did it, you know, the one he created, Adam. He put him to sleep. And then he cut him open without making a mark. And then he took a rib out and made a beautiful woman, Eve, out of that rib. And brought it to the man. And then Adam said... This is bone of my bone. It will not have happened, Adam, if you didn't go to sleep. If you were still awake and active, the operation will never be performed. But you see, God, he, 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 he slashed him open and he took the rib and then brought this woman, Eve. If you want the Lord to bring the fruitfulness and the success and the signs and the wonders. Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. And then when that is taken away, and then you come out of that oppression of the Lord, you're free on the inside. You don't bother about anything anymore. They disregard you or they praise you or they blame you. Self is gone. The feeling you used to have, the way you used to feel hurt. If anybody said anything, anybody did anything, they disregarded you. And you feel it to the marrow, to the bone. You don't feel that anymore. Self is destroyed. And it doesn't matter anymore. And those young people, they walk on you, they jump on you, they laugh at you, they ridicule you. What does it matter? The thing that you used to feel it. Had been removed. It's gone. Now you are free. Free to live. And free to serve the Lord. And then you know you just walk about. Because that Adamic nature. Call it whatever you want. That stony heart. That spiritual fiber. Had been taken away. And you know then you become fruitful. You become fruitful. The things you had done before. See this lady. She has been meeting with the husband before. But there was no fruit because of the fibroid. But now the fibroid is gone. Just meeting once. And then there's pregnancy. The same things you were doing before. And there was no fruit. And there were no converts. You do the same thing very simply now. Because the fibroid is taken away. Because the Adamic nature is gone. And because the stony heart is gone. You become fruitful. Look at this again. Now you understand. In Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. A new heart. Also will I give you. A new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart. 
out of your flesh and will give you an heart of flesh. The Lord will do it. Number three, predicted purposeful signs for God's people. Predicted purposeful signs for God's people. In Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 5. In Joshua chapter 3, it says, Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Now, as we look at the wonders that we're talking about, number one, the initial wonder. The initial wonder. Number two, the increasing wonders. Number three, incredible wonders. One, the initial wonder. As uh, a day were to set themselves apart, cleanse themselves, sanctify themselves, take away the field venus out of their temple. Then the Lord said, there's going to be an initial wonder. That's the one for tomorrow. Initial wonder. And as we look at this same chapter from verse 10. It says, uh, and, uh, and, and Joshua said, Hereby shall ye know that the living God is among you, that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Gergeshites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. You see, there is an initial wonder. The dividing of Jordan. Then there is the increasing wonder. And that is all these nations one by one. One by one. From territory to territory. From locality to locality. And from one place to the other. Increasing. Increasing wonders. And, and, and you will see. When you think about the dividing of Jordan. That's a great wonder. When you think about the stopping of the sun. The sun that serves the whole earth. Joshua had the authority to stop the sun that serves the whole world. The dividing of Jordan. Jordan only served all the communities where Jordan flowed by. But the sun that's increasing wonder. And then the incredible, incredible wonders. Sanctify yourself. There's going to be an initial wonder. And then increasing wonder. And then the incredible things happening. And this is what the Lord is saying. He's saying he specializes in signs and wonders. But you now, you have to do something that you sanctify yourselves. And as you look at this, if, you, if any of those children of Israel, that's why these children of Israel, this was a good generation. A good generation. And all of them, without ex exception, the men and the women, they just did exactly as Joshua said, and they sanctified themselves. And then you find chapter after chapter, wonders upon wonders. And if this generation of leaders that we have here tonight can be like these people of Israel, and we forget every other thing, and we say this is the one thing necessary to sanctify ourselves and give God a chance this year, give God a chance in this ministry, give God a chance in this lifetime to do wonders wonders upon wonders in our lives what a glorious thing that will be we'll do it we'll give god a chance why don't you rise up give god a chance with all seriousness no playing no joking no shouting just to distract other people's attention for this time let your mind be on god Forget yourself. Forget everybody else. And forget the old games. And the old tricks. And center. And focus your attention on the almighty God. And sanctify yourselves. And allow God to do wonders among you. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. But don't give us the kind of shout that is just meant to distract other people's attention. Let's be real children of God who have a heart for God. A might for God. 
a desire for God. Sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. Look at your heart. The attitude there. The intention there. The aspirations there. The concentration there. The focus there. Itself becoming big and hardened. Are we bent on something that we feel we must do, even that if that thing is not glorifying to God? Is a stony heart going to be permanent? Are we not going to give God a chance to remove this spiritual fine rod? Are you happy to be carrying this load about that makes you fruitless? That creates problems for you? Do you enjoy barrenness, spiritual barrenness? Do you enjoy uselessness? Don't you know that this fibroid is causing you, your spiritual family, a lot? Why don't you come? And kneel before the Lord in your own heart. And bow before the Lord in your own heart. And say, Lord, I've heard. Sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. That all the filthiness of the flesh. And the filthiness in the mind. And the filthiness in your intentions. And the filthiness even now outwardly in your action. That all the filthiness in your motives. That you will do your part and cleanse the house of the Lord. And carry forth and carry out. All the filthiness that is inside, the ones in the brain, the ones in the mind, the ones in the spirit, the ones in the inner man. If God can get a single man, like at the time of Elijah, the Lord can do great with one Elijah, great things with one Elijah, with one Moses. In a generation. With one Joshua. In a generation. With one Daniel. In a generation. Why wouldn't you be the man? With one Esther. In a generation. With one Ruth. In a generation. Why wouldn't you be the woman? Why wouldn't you be the man? And say Lord. Here I come. I may not know. I may not understand the depth and the height of sanctification, but you do. And you said, you are the Lord. I am the Lord who will sanctify you. Lord, I want you to do it for me. You are the Lord who sanctifies me. Until self is dead. And the old man is destroyed. And you don't mind whatever people do to you. You just excuse them. They know not what they do. They don't know the implications of what they are doing. And you don't mind how people belittle you. Because the you, the I, is dead. The filthiness of the flesh is gone. And the filthiness of the spirit is gone. And the pride in the carnal nature, the carnal nature is gone, or the pride sanctified. The Lord said he will do it. He said, I am the Lord. Not I was, not I will be, but I am. Is a present God. Ever living God. I am the Lord which sanctify you. He's still doing it today. And he has never lost the power or the wisdom. Or the desire 
to sanctify his people. I am the Lord who sanctify you. And if with all seriousness and with all dedication you come to the Lord, don't wait for others. We are not even born the same day. Those of us who are here, it's a personal matter. Neither were we born again the same day. It's a personal matter. This is your own need. Sanctify yourself. It's a personal matter. You're not looking at other people. You're not waiting for other people. Those people there, they are not ready yet. And so what? You are ready. You are not waiting for others. You are not, not, not allowing other people to influence you. To miss or to lose. What the almighty God is inviting you to come and have. We must not be so united with people that, you know, will become united in lack, loss, limitation. We must not become so united with people and sympathize with them in not wanting their sanctification. You cannot be so united with somebody and say, well, because you are not ready for heaven, okay, I'll wait for you. I'm not ready yet. You cannot gamble with your life to that extent. This is a personal matter. I am the Lord which sanctify you. A new heart will I give you and a new spirit. And you shall keep my statutes. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. It says he'll take it away. Let him put you to sleep. That you are not conscious of your environment anymore. If you are too much conscious about your environment. What people say. What people do. How people act. If you are too much conscious of your environment. You will delay the oppression. If you are, not, if you are too careful. And too conscious of yourself. I don't want any mark on my body. The woman is saying, if you're too conscious of yourself, of your body, of your flesh, the oppression will be delayed. But if there's no consciousness of anything like that, oh Lord, here am I. I'm in your hand. Here am I. I abandon myself unto you. Here am I. I yield myself unto you. Here am I. I devote myself unto you. Here am I. Do what you will. Sanctify me. Take the stony heart. The stubborn will. The stiff neck. Out of me. Even if this is the only thing I get in this congress. Then you'll be preparing me for signs and wonders. Sanctify yourselves. And allow God to do wonders. Wonders. Wonders in you. Wonders for you. Wonders through you. Be sincere in the sight of the Lord. Don't let the Lord read any attitude as if you are mocking the Lord in prayer. Let him see the seriousness and the desire that you want this precious promise to be fulfilled in your life, in your heart. Sanctification. The promised purifying sanctification for God's people. Let him do it in your heart. The very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray your whole spirit and soul 
and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord. And faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Give him a chance. Give him a chance. Give him a chance to do it. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened unto him. Ye have not before ye because ye ask not. Come with consecration. Come fully submissive, surrendered unto the Lord. Come with appreciation of this gift of grace. Come with expectation of faith. Come knowing that this is the possibility. The Lord your God will circumcise your heart. So you will love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind that thou mayest live. Allow God to do it. And when he does it, you will know. When the fire bird is gone, the lady will wake up and see. Thank God, that stony object is gone. And when you are sanctified, you'll tell. You'll be able to tell. The Spirit of God will be a witness with your heart. Praise God. The stony heart is taken away.